Welcome to Foodlink's basic food safety training for pantry programs. In this presentation, we will cover basic food safety principles so that you can be informed as to how to protect the health and safety of the individuals you serve. After completing this presentation, you will need to complete the online quiz for pantry programs and obtain a score of 80% or higher to pass and receive certification. There are practice questions throughout the presentation to help you prepare for the quiz. A brief overview of Foodlink. To fulfill our mission of ending hunger and leveraging the power of food to build a healthier community, Foodlink works with more than 500 partner organizations and houses a variety of programs. You're probably aware that Foodlink distributes dented cans, which we call retail damage product. What you might not know is that we both receive donated food and buy food, including shelf-stable items and fresh produce. The food comes from local farmers, individual and corporate donors, the USDA, community gardens, and a variety of food vendors. This food then goes out to serve our community through mobile pantries, food pantries, soup kitchens, shelters, group homes, daycares, schools, farm stands, and corner stores. Nutrition in the Emergency Food System Foodlink is rooted in the belief that food must play a key role in reducing poverty, improving education and health outcomes, and fostering ec economic mobility for underserved individuals. Good nutrition is critical to good health and success. We encourage you to provide nutritious offerings. My Plate illustrates the government's recommendation for a healthy diet. My Plate is made up of the five food groups vegetables, fruits, grains, protein, and dairy. It's important to eat from all five food groups each day, with an emphasis on fruits and vegetables. Please use the Pantry Package Food Guide to help your clients meet the My Plate guidelines. We recommend stocking your pantry with a variety of options, including both fresh, frozen, and canned fruits and vegetables. Look for items such as 100% fruit juice, canned fruits and juice or water, and canned veggies with no salt add added. My plate suggests half our grains be whole grains. Look for cereals low in sugar and breads or pastas made with whole grains. For proteins, offer lean protein items such as tuna, chicken, and turkey. And lastly, offer low-fat dairy products such as shelf-stable 1% milk. Let's review. What are the five food groups? Fruits, vegetables, grains, protein, and dairy. Foodborne illness. What is it, where is it, and how does it spread? A foodborne illness is a disease that is transmitted by food to people. According to the CDC, there are 250 different foodborne diseases. Even though many foodborne illnesses go unreported, each year 48 million Americans experience foodborne illness resulting in 128,000 hospitalizations and 3,000 deaths. Foodborne illness can be caused by chemical hazards such as cleansers and sanitizers, biological hazards such as bacteria, viruses, and parasites, or physical hazards such as glass, bones, and metal shavings. Contamination of food can be odorless, tasteless, and may not affect the appearance of the food. Every person is susceptible to foodborne illness. However, individuals who are malnourished and or have weakened immune systems are even more susceptible to foodborne illness. Such vulnerable populations include the elderly, children, and the ill and infirm. With 26% of Foodlink's clients over the age of 50 and 36% of clients under the age of 18, as a food pantry, you are most likely serving one of these vulnerable populations, so proper food safety is key. We've probably all experienced foodborne illness at some point in our life, and remember common symptoms including nausea, vomiting, fever, and diarrhea. These can be mild to life-threatening. The top three reasons foodborne illness occurs in the U.S. are improper hand washing, not cooking foods to correct temperatures, and holding food at incorrect temperatures. Proper hand washing is the number one way to help prevent against foodborne illness. 
Encourage proper and frequent hand washing for all staff and volunteers that handle food. Let's review. What is an example of a biological hazard that can cause foodborne illness? The correct answer is B, bacteria. Remember, biological hazards include bacteria, viruses, and parasites. Which of the following is the number one reason for the spread of foodborne illness? The correct answer is D, improper hand washing. Remember these three takeaways. Contamination can be odorless and tasteless. Time and temperature controls play a big role in helping to keep food safe. And lastly, proper hand washing is the number one way to help prevent against foodborne illness. Let's review some basic principles of food safety. When working with temperature sensitive food, we must be aware of the temperature danger zone. The temperature danger zone occurs between 41 degrees Fahrenheit and 140 degrees Fahrenheit and it is where bacteria grows best. To ensure safe food, you must keep food out of this temperature range. Remember, keep cold foods cold and hot foods hot. Bacteria need six conditions to grow. You can remember these conditions by thinking of the words fat tom, standing for food, acidity, time, temperature, oxygen, and moisture. Most bacteria need nutrients to survive and grow best in little to no acidity. As discussed earlier, bacteria grow best between 41 degrees Fahrenheit and 140 degrees Fahrenheit. Furthermore, bacteria need time to grow. Bacteria double every 20 minutes and can reach dangerous levels after four hours. The more time bacteria spend in the danger zone, the more opportunity they have to grow to unsafe levels. Some bacteria need oxygen to grow. Others, such as Clostridium botulinum, grow when oxygen is not present. Lastly, bacteria grow well in food with high levels of moisture. Remember, time and temperature are the only two conditions you are able to control. Only cooking will kill bacteria. Refrigeration and freezers simply slow the growth of bacteria. TCS foods are foods that are most likely to become unsafe. Because pathogens grow well in these foods, they require time, temperature, control for safety. Such foods are usually high in moisture and low in acidity. Examples of some TCS foods are poultry, seafood, dairy products, baked potatoes, cooked rice, and pastas, as well as ready-to-eat products such as salad. Let's review. What is the temperature danger zone? The correct answer is C, 41 degrees Fahrenheit to 140 degrees Fahrenheit. Which of the following is not a condition that bacteria needs to grow? The correct answer is B, sanitizing. Remember, fat tom, food, acidity, time, temperature, oxygen, and moisture. Now that we've learned what causes foodborne illness, let's discuss ways we can prevent foodborne illness from occurring. If your agency picks up food directly from Foodlink, or if you pick up donations from other retail stores, please follow these guidelines to ensure the safety of the food that you are transporting. Clean the inside of vehicles at least once per week, or as often as necessary. Make sure vehicles are pest-free. Do not bring pets when transporting food. Never transport food in vehicles used to haul garbage. To avoid contamination, keep items such as oil, antifreeze, and wiper fluid separate from food. And lastly, always lock and seal vehicles when they are not being loaded or unloaded. Let's review some best practices to keep in mind while transporting food. As discussed, cold food must be kept cold. To help ensure this, keep driving times to 30 minutes or less. Furthermore, keep refrigerated food at 41 degrees Fahrenheit or lower during transport by using coolers with ice packs, th thermal blankets, or transporting them in a refrigerated truck. If possible, keep frozen food at temperatures that will keep it frozen. 
Before loading refrigerated or frozen items into your vehicle, spot check the temperature of a couple of items. Then, upon arrival, check the temperature of the same two items to ensure food safety. Document temperatures in a temperature log. To avoid cross-contamination, never store raw food over ready-to-eat food. Raw foods include raw meat, seafood, poultry, and shell eggs. Never leave food outside or unsupervised, and never leave refrigerated or frozen product at room temperature. Once you have arrived at your destination, promptly and properly store your food product, and never leave food by garbage containers. Safe Receiving As we discussed earlier, Foodlink receives food from a variety of places, including donations and purchased items. Please be aware that Foodlink distributes shelf-stable product that can be up to six months past its expiration date. This is important to, to keep in mind when determining quantities for your inventory. Safe food starts with proper handling and storing of ingredients and supplies. Always have someone to meet and receive the delivery. During receiving, you can review your order, ensure all items are accounted for and in good condition. When receiving cold and frozen product, keep in mind that it should arrive cold and frozen. Then, promptly store your items properly. Always check the condition of all incoming food, including items you receive from Foodlink. Contact Foodlink if you notice issues. Another best practice is to mark the receiving date on all product. This will allow you to easily recognize the product you need to push out first. We call this practice FIFO, first in, first out. If you are unable to label and date each container, another way to implement stock rotation is to label the shelving with use first signage or with temporary signage stating the date it was received. Each program can determine which stock rotation method works best for them. To check the temperature of cold or frozen product, insert the thermometer stem or probe between two packages. To avoid con contamination, never insert the thermometer into the packaging. Ensure that you are using a properly calibrated thermometer when checking temperatures. Thermometers should be calibrated at least once a month or whenever they are dropped or banged. The ice water method is a good method for calibrating thermometers. Simply fill a cup with half ice and half water. Submerge a stem thermometer into the ice water and wait at least 30 seconds. The arrow should point to 32 degrees Fahrenheit. We know this is correct because water freezes at 32 degrees Fahrenheit. If it is showing an incorrect temperature, adjust the calibration nut until the arrow points to 32 degrees Fahrenheit, checking it again in ice water. Many cans that are received from Foodlink or through donations you may receive have dents. It's important for you to know what is a safe dent and what is not. If there is an unsafe dent, this could allow air or microorganisms to enter the can, allowing bacteria and spores to form. Any can with a dent on the seam, where the side and end meet, or one that is sharp, swollen, or bulging, rusting or leaking is considered unsafe. One good tip to remember is, if it cannot be stacked, then it should probably be discarded. A safe dent would be one that is smooth, not on the seam, and does not compromise the can juncture. Let's review some more examples of unsafe can dents. The can dent in the top picture has sharp edges and occurs on the bottom seam. In the bottom picture, the seam is peeled back again, compromising the can juncture. Please familiarize yourself with these examples of unsafe can dents. Let's review. A stem thermometer should read blank degrees Fahrenheit when you are calibrating it in ice water. The correct answer is C, 32. Which of the following cans is unsafe? The correct answer is A, because it has a dent along the side seam. Let's discuss safe receiving of glass bottles and jars. 
First and foremost, never accept home canned or jarred product. Always discard a bottle or jar where the glass is cracked or chipped, leaking or discolored. Check the vacuum pop-up button for evidence that the cap or seal has been opened. For bagged items such as flour, rice, or sugar, always discard products that have rips, tears, or holes, unknown stains, or missing labels. For box items such as cereal or crackers, please ensure the inner bag is intact. If the outside box is torn but the inner bag is intact, then the product is safe. If there is no inner lining for box products such as pasta, always dispose of the product if the box has been open or torn. Foodlink tracks all recalled items. If you've received a recall item, we will inform you to remove it from your inventory and to please inform any clients if the item has already been distributed. Please keep an eye out on the online ordering system for New York State recalls. Have you noticed expired food coming from Foodlink? Have clients asked why food is expired? If a product is past its expiration date, it is not necessarily bad. The quality, meaning flavor, color, and texture may change, but the safety of the product may be perfectly good. Assuming the food has been stored properly, many food items are safe well beyond the dates marked. Please use the Food Keeper brochure to determine how long foods are still safe after their expiration dates and help educate clients when questions arise. This resource can be found on the Foodlink website. Infant products are the exception to the expiration rule. Never distribute infant products that are past their expiration date. Safe storage. Once we have properly received the product, we now want to practice proper storage. We recommend using shelving that is easy to clean. Food must be stored at least six inches off the floor. This allows you to be able to clean under shelving units. Furthermore, food should be two to four inches away from the wall. This prevents the product from getting wet should there be a leak in the ceiling and helps decrease changes in temperature if located on an outside wall. Always store cleaning supplies and chemicals away from food. Lastly, as discussed earlier, practice FIFO, first in, first out, to help keep product moving so that older product does not sit on the shelf for too long. Refrigerators should maintain a temperature of 41 degrees Fahrenheit or lower for safe storage of cold items. Monitor and record refrigerator temperature in a temperature log. Label and date all food to be sure and be sure to clean out the fridge regularly to ensure proper rotation of food. Lastly, do not overcrowd refrigerators. You want to allow proper air circulation to maintain a safe temperature for the cold food items. Remember, eggs should be stored inside the refrigerator. To avoid breakage and possible contamination, never store them inside the door of the refrigerator or loose outside their container. For a frozen product, maintain a freezer temperature of 0 degrees Fahrenheit or lower. Again, monitor freezer temperatures and record them in a temperature log. Label and date all food and make sure packages are airtight. Ensure proper air circulation by not overcrowding the freezer. Only whole skin on fruit or vegetables such as apples, bananas, or oranges may be repackaged. Never repackage any processed foods such as cereal. Let's review. True or false? If the outside package of an item is damaged but the inside package is still, is still sealed, then the item is not safe to distribute. The correct answer is false. Remember, as long as the inside package is still sealed and hasn't been damaged, then it is safe to distribute. Proper hygiene practices. Ensure all food workers practice good personal hygiene can be your best line of defense against foodborne illness. This includes proper hand washing before handling any food products. Follow these steps for proper hand washing. Wet hands with warm water. 
Apply soap and wash your hands for 20 seconds and be sure to get in between your fingers and under your nails. Rinse with warm water, dry your hands with a disposable towel, and turn off the water faucet with your disposable towel to prevent recontamination. Always wash your hands after using the restroom, sneezing or coughing, handling raw food, smoking, eating, or drinking, touching your hair, face, or clothing. If repackaging whole skin on fruit such as apples, Avoid bare hand contact and apply gloves. Remember, always wash hands before putting on gloves. Gloves are to be single use and should be changed as soon as they become dirty, torn, or when changing tasks. Be careful not to touch your face, hair, or clothes when wearing gloves. Time to review. How long should you wash your hands for? The correct answer is B, 20 seconds, about how long it takes to sing happy birthday twice. Congratulations, we've now completed the basic food safety training. Please return to the FoodLink website and complete the quiz for pantry programs. Remember, you must receive a score of at least 80% to pass. You have an unlimited number of times to take the quiz. Once you have received an 80% or higher, FoodLink will send you a certificate of completion. We also encourage you as members of FoodLink to take advantage of our nutrition education programs. We offer a variety of nutrition and cooking classes. Please contact Alyssa Van Valkenburg to learn more and get connected with one of our educators. If you'd like to further your knowledge in food safety, FoodLink also offers Level 1 Food Manager and Level 2 Food Handler certification trainings. Please contact Emily Diaz to register for a class. Thank you for taking FoodLink's basic food safety course. You play a vital role in making sure that the food supply is safe to those you serve. Contact Laura Shugawala for additional information or questions regarding food safety.